This is episode number 182. If you're feeling stuck in your business right now? I've got four reasons why that may be happening and four solutions for you. That's coming up on this episode. This is the Red Podcast. How to take your idea and make a name for yourself within your industry and beyond. Spread your message. Attract a following. Rise above the noise. Here's your host, David Hooper. It's November. We're in the middle of November Novel Writing Month. You've probably seen this if you've been on Facebook, Twitter, social media. A lot of people are writing books right now. I am as well. I'm finishing out my new book. It's nonfiction. It's how to build your influence as a podcaster. If you have a podcast or if you're thinking about doing a podcast, this is the book for you. I'm about 76,000 words in. It keeps getting longer. It was originally going to be about a 40,000 word book. thought I could knock it out in a couple months. Had more ideas to put to it. Then it became 60,000. Then it became 70,000. Right now, my goal is 80,000 words. Not going to be able to do it. I've got too much information. Could be 100,000. Hope to have this book out by the first of the year. Finishing this book out is the reason that I've slowed down a little bit on releasing Red Podcast episodes. More are coming. Redpodcast.com will make sure that you're subscribed and never miss an episode. It's a writing thing. It takes a while for me. November Novel Writing Month. You guys are cranking out 30,000 word books in a month. If you're interested in that, I'm going to have this linked at redpodcast.com slash 182. It's not too late for you to get in on it. If you have a novel in your heart, in your head, these guys will help you get it out. You'll have it out by the end of the month. They've got the system down, and you might even be able to get your release out before I get mine out. Hey, speaking of books, a couple of episodes from now, we'll be talking about how to hack the New York Times bestseller list. This also works for Billboard. That's how I first learned this technique, and you see a lot of guys doing this, a lot of the gurus, nonfiction guys, a lot of preachers, Scientologists. Anytime they come up with like a Dianetics-style book, these guys reach the top of the New York Times bestseller list. How do they do it? I'll be talking about that, kind of pulling back the curtain, letting you know all the tricks people are using. You can use them too. Then I'll talk about do you really want to use those. That's coming up on the Red Podcast, redpodcast.com to subscribe. Hey, did I mention this is the Red Podcast? It is the podcast for influencers. If you're a blogger, you're a speaker, podcaster, marketer, you're a nonfiction author, or you want to be, this is the podcast for you. What do I talk about? Book publishing, podcasting, speaking, and other marketing elements of your business that you must master to make a name for yourself. The focus is how to take your idea, spread your message, and make money. If you're not getting everything done that you want to right now, these four reasons may be why. The first one, shiny objects, also known as distraction. You know, I got a text from a friend of mine. Wish I had my phone because I'd read it to you right now. This guy, he was playing Call of Duty 8 to 11 hours per day. And this guy is very successful. He's actually a captain of a major airline, flies all over the place, does international flights, a lot of flying hours. And because he can only fly so much, they leave him at home for a few days sometimes. And what was he doing? Playing PlayStation, not getting done what he wants to. He said 8 to 11 hours per day. So what's the solution? Give PlayStation away. He was spending a lot of time on Facebook, traveling around the world, posting photos, interacting with people that weren't even there. What did he do? Shut off Facebook. Sometimes you have to be that extreme. Usually distraction is more than things that are just business related. It's things like electronics, like social media. But it can also be those things such as your family, things that are perfectly normal, perfectly good for you to have but it becomes a distraction as your way of not accomplishing what you should. And on the flip side of that, workaholism. See a lot of guys working too much, getting too much done when they should be spending time with their families. So bad relationships, houses, cars, anything that takes you away from your goals. I call them shiny objects. You may call them distractions. One of the big ones that Stephen Pressfield talks about, and you should absolutely read his book, War of Art, and also Turning Pro, two good books that are fantastic for entrepreneurs and will give you a lot of great advice and also inspiration. It's a great mix of things that you should be doing and things that will inspire you to actually do them. 
But he talks about a shadow career. And this is something that I saw a lot during my time in the music industry. You would have people that were entertainers or wanted to be entertainers, and they would get established in the business as maybe a secondary man, a manager, stagehand, somebody working alongside entertainers. Why did that happen? A lot of times it would happen because somebody was looking for a way into the business. And you can certainly meet a lot of people if you're working alongside somebody. You could use what they're doing as leverage and momentum for your own career. But what I saw a lot when it was time for somebody to leave those side careers and pursue their own career as an entertainer, as the person on stage, they wouldn't do that. That's what Stephen Pressfield calls a shadow career. You're very close to doing what you should be doing, which in this case was being an entertainer. In your case, maybe it's being an author, being a podcaster. Instead of editing other people's podcasts, maybe you need to be hosting your own podcast. The things that are similar but different. I knew a guy really wanted to be in the entertainment business badly. And what he started doing was managing fan clubs, being a website manager, never got it off the ground. And then he wondered why he was so unhappy. Well, he's not pursuing his dream. He's not pursuing what he was meant to be doing. So if you think that you may be doing that, something to look at, distractions, shiny objects, and shadow careers, that's the first reason why you may be stuck right now. What's the solution to this? I hinted on it earlier. Maybe you don't want to be as extreme as my friend who's a pilot, gave his PlayStation away, ended his relationship with Facebook. But even if you're not that extreme, the solution is still the same, and that's to simplify. Remove the tasks in your life that are taking you away from what you want. When you do something, it's taking you closer to what you want or it's moving you further away. If this scares you, and it should, I suggest this, a 30-day trial, 30-day test. Just try it out for 30 days. If it works for you, great. If it doesn't work for you, day 31, just go back to what you were doing. But a 30-day test, 30 days is great. 30 days is the November novel writing month. Most people can commit to something for 30 days. So if you're ready to do that, if you said that you've wanted to do a book and you're not, you're a shadow career, well, November novel writing month, redpodcast.com number 182 will have information on that. But what is your thing that you need to test Right now, till the end of the month, let me know. At David Hooper on Twitter is how to get me. Number two, the second reason why you're stuck, fear of failure. There's actually a name for this. I'm probably going to mispronounce it. It's atychophobia. It's a worry that people will lose interest in you, worry about your own abilities to succeed, lowering expectations. I'm going to try this, but I don't expect it to work. We've all heard people talk like that. You may be talking like that. It's distraction that keeps you from completing tasks. What I just mentioned, that PlayStation, Facebook, your wife, your kids. Maybe it's your job because you should be spending more time with your wife and kids. We hear people saying that I ran out of time. Didn't have time. Missed the deadline. I knew a guy. This is back when I was younger. In high school. Incredible artist. Had a lot of talent. Everybody thought he was going to do well. Visiting all sorts of great art colleges, including SCAD, Savannah College of Art and Design. This guy was very talented. In the end, when it was time to apply for colleges, didn't do it. Didn't apply to one. Deadline after deadline after deadline passed. Ended up going to a local state school. Never moved out of the house. In fact, he's still living with his parents. That's a guy who's got fear of failure. And that's the kind of thing that you don't want to happen to you. So how do you deal with it? I did an entire episode on this. It's called Rejection Therapy. Episode number 103, redpodcast.com slash 103. And if you're interested in finding even more about rejection therapy, episode number 144, redpodcast.com slash 144. It's great advice from a friend of mine named Ja Jung. He wrote a book called Rejection Proof. You may have seen the viral videos on YouTube. And this is a great thing for you to do a 30-day trial on. 30 days of rejection. Some great advice on these episodes redpodcast.com slash 103, redpodcast.com slash 144 if you need ideas on how to get started with rejection therapy. Basically what you're doing is you're owning the fear. You're focusing on what you can control. And once you have that, what you can't control doesn't matter. So I highly recommend rejection therapy if you've got fear of failure. It'll get to where it just runs off your back, like water off a duck's back. Not a problem. Something I see a lot of entrepreneurs do, and this holds them back big time, 100% focus on money. Obviously, if you're in business, you want to make money. Money is part of this. 
but 100% focus on money leads to bad decisions. You need to think elsewhere. You need to think about other things. What kind of impact do you want to have on people? What kind of life do you want to live? I was once working with a guy. We did a lot of online marketing together. Sharp guy. And whenever there was an opportunity for him to take money, he would take it. The problem is, is that because he followed the money, he started making bad decisions, especially when it came to things like affiliate offers. If there were two products, even if you gave him just $10 more to promote an inferior product, he would promote that rather than the better product. That hurt his relationships with customers. It hurt his relationship with me because I started not to trust him. He was following the money 100%. I think going into your business when you're first starting out, it's important to get very clear on what you will do for money and what you won't do for money. Have some of those big ideas in place because what you say yes to, well, there's a sliding morality. And there was a great study done on this. It was a sliding morality example. I'll tell you what, I'm not going to put this on the podcast, but if you want to send me a message via Twitter, do it, at David Hooper. Say, hey, David, what's the name of that study? I will link it to you. It's funny. It's entertaining. It talks about morality, and it talks about the sliding scale that people have when they follow the money. It's not exactly about money. It's about something else, but you're going to get a kick out of it. Hit me up, at David Hooper on Twitter, and I'll send you that test. The big issue, I think, when it comes to following the money, and this is why you're not getting things done, you start self-sabotaging, is because that motivation doesn't last very long. You've seen those guys, they buy a big car, a big house, makes them happy for a little bit, maybe a couple of weeks. After that, just not very exciting. You've got to have a bigger mission to get up at the crack of dawn. You've got to have a bigger mission to get in the studio, record a podcast. You've got to have a bigger mission to sit down in front of a blank screen and type out a book. You know what you're doing. It's not easy. You can't just follow the money. Once you get so much of it, and the amount is about $60,000 right now for the United States, after $60,000, your life isn't going to change that drastically. Once you've got that, additional money is not going to give you a whole lot more happiness. I've got a great example for you to follow on this. This is a guy that I've known at least 20 years Derek Sivers is his name. You might have seen him talk at TED. He's done that a few times. If you go to episode number 143, and that's at redpodcast.com slash 143, this is a guy that had a pretty good thing going on. It was a company called CD Baby. Tens of thousands of musicians as clients. He's selling their music. He's sending them money every week. Everybody loved Derek, and everybody wanted to know What made him successful? Because he'd been a very successful musician before he started CD Baby. So I used to talk to Derek all the time. I said, man, you've got tens of thousands of people that are just waiting for more information. Why don't you do a book? So, well, that's not my focus. My focus is selling music. Of course, eventually he did do a book. It's called Anything You Want. I'll have that linked. It's at redpodcast.com slash 182. Did it with Seth Godin. It was just re-released on a major New York publisher. It's a fantastic book book. It's called Anything You Want. And that was after he sold CD Baby for $22 million, had the time. Somebody else was handling the musicians, taking care of the musicians very well. He did write that book. He's a great example to follow because he wasn't focused on maximizing every single element of that music relationship. And that's probably why he was able to sell that company for $22 million. So think about that. You focus on doing what's right you focus on taking care of your people, the money's going to come. It's not going to come maybe how you think that it is. It's not going to come from maximizing every single email that you send, every recommendation by going for those affiliate offers, even if it's not the best product for your people. But when you take care of them, they take care of you. And eventually, things like what happened to Derek can happen to you. Somebody comes in, gives you a lot of money, and then you can really do amazing things. It's a great interview. Derek Sivers, 143 is the show, redpodcast.com slash 143. He talked about that. I asked him, I said, what is it like to have enough money where you never have to work again? Got a great quote, redpodcast.com slash 143 for that. I'm going to leave you with one final reason why you may not be getting everything that you want done while you're being held back. And it's your own fault. It's because you're playing somebody else's game. When you're playing somebody else's game, doing what they want instead of what you want, You sabotage it. It's not natural for you to play somebody else's game. You don't have that good why. You're going for somebody else's mission, not your mission. 
You're also not very good at it. Again, it's not natural. And even if you are good at the technical aspects of it, it just doesn't feel right. I did an interview with a guy named John Acuff, very inspiring. And this is a guy that was really the guy under Dave Ramsey. He was Dave's right-hand man as far as being an ambassador for the Dave Ramsey company. He was on the road dozens of dates per year, and he walked away from it. Why did he do that? I did an entire episode. It's at redpodcast.com slash 140. He talks about walking away from a very good thing, very good job, being paid well. He had a huge machine behind him. He could get on the radio and talk to 5 million people any time he wanted, and he walked away from it to start his own thing. I did that episode. Again, it's at redpodcast.com slash 140. The week, his first independent book came out. When I say independent, he was signed to a book deal. He had a major New York publisher publish his book. But this was without Ramsey. Hit the New York Times bestseller. You can walk away and still have great things happen to you. But this is a great interview because it was at the time when he wasn't sure that this thing was going to hit, didn't know. And John Acuff is absolutely a guy that you should check out because he is an inspiration for what can happen to you and what will happen to you when you walk away and you start playing your game. It's at acuff.me is his website, and that interview that I did with him, redpodcast.com slash 140. Hey, speaking of Dave Ramsey, on the next episode, episode number 183, I'm going to talk to you about why I was banned from Dave Ramsey and why it was a very smart move for him to do that. Dave just shut me down, banned me, blocked me, can't communicate with him anymore. That's next on Red Podcast. If you've got questions, you've got comments, reach out to me. Twitter is the best way to get me. At David Hooper is my username. I want you to think about that 30-day trial. If you think you've got a book in you, November is the perfect month to write a book, even if you're not doing a novel, even if you're doing nonfiction. There's going to be a lot of support for writers this month. I'll have this all linked at redpodcast.com slash 182. Thanks again for listening. Reach out to me, and I'll see you on the next episode of the Red Podcast. You've been listening to Red Podcast, real entrepreneur development. Subscribe today using iTunes, Stitcher, or via RSS at redpodcast.com. There's actually a name for this. I'm going to mispronounce it. A Taichafo... <laughs>